You know, thinking about our kids going back to school on Tuesday reminded me of a time when my daughter Kelly was in high school. They hadn't been in class long when I got a call from her English teacher. That's always a fearsome thing. <laughs> but she said, I think Kelly is capable of far more than she's going to get in this basic class. She knows what I'm going to teach. And I'd like to move her on to the advanced class. She'll read a different level of literature. She'll learn more about composition. She'll be better prepared for college. I think she needs the challenge. Well, she didn't have to convince me. Kelly, however, was a different story. When she got home, I told her about the phone call, and she was absolutely not interested, and I was not happy. In the interest of full disclosure, do you know what I taught? English and literature. <laughs> I love books, and the thing is, so does that child. We spent hours reading together everything from The Secret Garden to How to Kill a Mockingbird. And, and as for our mama, I knew she could not only excel in that class, but she needed the academic challenge if she was going to be able to face that college work that was in front of her. How on earth could she not want to do that? In a tiny measure... That's the sense of outrage behind this warning to the letter uh, to the Hebrews that was written to Jewish Christians to explain how the covenant that they now shared with Jesus was a far better one than they had had under the law. It made sense of the rituals that they had practiced, the sacrifices that they had made, the laws that they were asked to keep. They all pointed to Jesus. There's mystery after mystery that's explained in that letter. And you can tell just how the writer is overwhelmed with the beauty of how all of this fits together. But then he realizes that not only are the Jewish Christians not getting it, but they don't seem to care that they're not getting it. They're stuck in their spiritual growth. And the result is this, they're foundering in their faith. You can say out or you can say amen. It's not that they're not capable of understanding. In John 16, 12 through 13, just before Jesus is crucified, he says this, I have so much more to say to you, but you can't bear it right now. But when the Spirit comes, he'll guide you into all truth. Well, the Spirit has come. When did he come? Pentecost. Those to whom this letter is written then, like us, are very well equipped, well able to comprehend these things now, right? I knew you knew that. But when we come to this point in the letter, the author is nearly beside himself because he sees what's happening and the reason that it's happening. These Jewish Christians are struggling. They're dealing with normal persecution that accompanied being a Christian in the Roman world. That was hard enough. But they're also being persecuted by other Jews, many of whom were family and friends that wanted them to go back to old ways of life and religious ritual. And the writer desperately wants for them to understand how important it was for them to grow specifically in knowledge so that they wouldn't be tempted to fall away. That warning could be easily written to us today as the church is being persecuted for its beliefs about life and marriage. Now you can see the effect on the greater church nationwide. It's being divided as our society swings further and further away from the underpinnings of truth. And in the midst of all of those controversies, many are falling away, not just from the church, but they're falling away from faith. They don't know what to believe. The writer of Hebrews puts his finger right on the problem. We need a more complete knowledge. The Apostle Paul writes about that need in Ephesians 4, encouraging us to grow in the knowledge of Jesus so that we become mature and can't be tossed around by the stuff that goes on around us. In chapter 5, verse 14, Hebrews warns us of the dangers of a partial knowledge. He says if we're going to make truly wise decisions, especially in light of the things that are going on around us, we need something more than the basics, don't we? It's interesting how he defines the basics. Think about this. Because these are things that we should obviously know. Let's do a self-test. What do you know about faith in God? Why is faith so necessary? Where does faith come from? Why does it please God so? What do you know about the importance of repentance? Is it just a matter of being sorry? 
Is change just a matter of self-discipline? Or is there power in repentance that will help us turn away from those things that will harm us? What happens if we fall back into them after we've repented and asked for forgiveness? Is there a point of no return? What about baptisms? Why is baptism necessary? What does it really mean to be baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Is there just one baptism? Or are there other types of baptisms? It's getting a little uncomfortable, isn't it? I sort of know what those things mean. What do you know about the laying on of hands? Is it just for healing or is there more associated with it? And what about the raising of the dead? Is it just our spirit that ascends into heaven or is there something more? When will the raising of the dead happen? Has it happened already? And what about eternal judgment? Who will be judged? Who will judge? On what basis? How would you answer those things? See, most of them are critical to understand if we're going to live in a right relationship with a holy God. Most of them are critical if we're going to be able to make wise decisions about life and how to stand in a society that is not going to be. Most are critical if we are to understand the power that is given to us as believers. And some are even critical if we have that expectation of eternal life. The author of Hebrews gives us a great word picture here. He says that this basic knowledge is like the foundation. Once we've built it, we don't have to keep building it. Instead, we need to build on it by growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, there are two additional warnings in this passage written so that readers will understand just what's at stake if we don't continue to grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. He says, one, some will fall away, and it will be impossible for them to be restored. And we can try and twist and turn that to say what we want because that's uncomfortable, isn't it? But he's clearly writing here about those who have believed. They were once enlightened. They shared in the Holy Spirit. They tasted the goodness of the Word of God. These are believers whose lives have been changed by Jesus, but they fell away. And since he's writing to Jewish Christians, he tells them exactly what the effect of their falling away from Jesus has on their witness to the world. It's as if they were saying to those who crucified Jesus, oh, you were right to do so. Ow! Does Jesus' death matter? Yes. yes! You know that answer! Second, he writes of the fruit that's expected from a believer's life. He compares it to soils upon which the rains fall. And the question is raised, is what's growing in that, what's growing in that life? Because it matters what grows in that life, doesn't it? In John 15, Jesus says that it's God's desire for us as believers to bear much fruit. And in the parable of the sower, Jesus says that what grows in us is a direct result of the soil of the heart. The word of God is constantly being sown. But it's the state of our hearts that determine how we receive it and what's produced in it as a result. Ow. <laughs> Those things give us a sound means of evaluating where we are, don't they? First, do we understand the basics of the faith? You know, when I ask that, do you understand them well enough to explain to somebody else? Because that's our job, right? Second, are we choosing to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ? Because we've been made able to understand through the Holy Spirit, haven't we? Most importantly, what's the state of our heart? In just a moment... We're going to come to this table where we give thanks for what has been given to us through Jesus Christ. So let's take just a moment and consider where we are and what might need to happen as a result.